Hi everyone, welcome back to Lecture 7e of Useful Genetics. We're going to talk just briefly about the differences in meiosis between males and females. We'll talk about the products of meiosis in males and in females, and the timing when meiosis happens in males and females. So here's male meiosis, and it's basically the meiosis that we've already learned about. We have a cell in males, the cell the germline cell that's undergo, going to undergo meiosis is called a spermatocyte, a cell that makes sperm, and it does meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 and produces four products of meiosis. These cells aren't sperm yet. They don't have tails, for instance. They're called spermatids, and then they will develop the um, morphological structures that turn them into actively swimming sperm. The key point is that all four products of meiosis turn into sperm, all four cells. And here's another meiosis, another in the same male. And <clears throat> again, the chromosomes have lined up differently, but the products are the same. All four spermatids go on to become sperm. When does this happen in males? Well, it starts happening around puberty, and it continues pretty much through the whole life. Sperm production gradually decreases as men get older, but there's lots of um, evidence of men producing functional sperm even well into old age. What about female meiosis? Here it's quite different. So the female cell that, produce, that undergoes meiosis is called the oocyte, or you can say oocyte if you like, um, and it's meiosis, although the behavior of the chromosomes is similar, the cell divisions are quite different. Be and that's because the female egg needs to contain lots of resources to support the initial growth of the embryo. And it would be foolish for a female who's only going to have one offspring to split those resources between four different daughter cells. So all of the resources of the oocyte wind up in the final cell, the product of meiosis, which is called an ovum. But that ovum only has, it's a haploid cell with just one chromatid, one replicated chromosome in it. The other products of meiosis are not full-sized cells. So meiosis one, instead of producing two equal-sized cells, butts off the other unwanted homologous chromosome into a little tiny cell called a polar body. And then meiosis II carries out a second little polar body formation. These are called the first polar body and the second polar body. So that's the first polar body and the second polar body. And they contain all of the chromosomes that aren't needed by the now haploid ovum. So this creates a further complication when we think about the products of meiosis genetically. Because if we consider another meiosis in which the chromosomes may have lined up differently, in this case I put the light colored one on the right hand side, now the first polar body gets the dark blue chromosomes and so the single ovum actually has a different genotype than the first cell division did, the first version of meiosis that we showed did. The timing of meiosis is also more complicated in females than in males. It starts sooner and ends sooner. Meiosis in females starts during fetal development, after the germline cells have been set aside separate from the somatic cells, all of the oocytes that a female is ever going to produce are produced in the fetus. And all of those oocytes begin to undergo meiosis. They start meiosis 1. They get partway through meiosis 1, where the chromosomes are just lined up ready to separate, and then the cells all pause. We describe that as a meiotic arrest. The cells stop meiosis and they just hang in there. And they hang in there for 10 or 15 years. They hang in there until the child 
reaches puberty. And then each menstrual cycle, roughly every 28 days, one of the oocytes becomes active and finishes meiosis and is available for fertilization. And that continues with usually only one oocyte each month until the woman reaches menopause at about age 50 when the whole production of female gametes stops. So that's very different than what happens in males. So here's a pair of questions for you. This first question is for the males in the class, asking you, when does or did meiosis happen in you? And you should check all the boxes that apply to you. If you're female, you should skip this question. So if you're male, you would say that, well, meiosis happened during puberty, unless you're a very young male and you haven't hit puberty yet. And almost certainly, it's happening to you right now. Because you're not producing just a few gametes, you're producing millions of sperm every day. So it's going on continuously. Here's the version of the question for the women in the class. When does or did meiosis happen in you? And the answer is, well, it happened in the developing fetus. It sort of hung in there, and then it started actively happening again during puberty, one cell at a time. If you're premenopausal, if you're in your fertile years, then you would choose, oh my god, it's happening right now. If you're postmenopausal, then you would say, ah, I'm too old for that now. So we've considered the differences in meiosis in males and in females, and there's differences of several kinds. One is what happens to the four cells that meiosis normally produces. In males, all four of those cells become sperm. In females, only one of those cells is really a cell. The others are two small sort of membrane-enclosed blebs called polar bodies which contain the unwanted chromosomes from the division. The timing is also very different. In males, meiosis begins in puberty and continues for the lifespan, essentially, whereas in females, it begins much earlier in the fetus, but then it arrests and doesn't begin again until puberty. In males, there are millions of meioses, maybe 50 million every day, depending on your age, in females, there's only about one meiosis completed every month in each menstrual cycle, and the menstrual cycles eventually cease at menopause. Coming up next, Lecture 7F, we're going to talk about how meiosis solves problem two, randomizing the combinations of chromosomes that get put into the daughter cells. I hope to see you there.